Well, um, well, I don't, I well. Don't, I'm not talking about starving, but um, I suppose about three hours. Hours, okay, not days. days. Yeah. Okay. But I think you can probably do it after with the window the next day. Okay. Okay. I move then, once and constantly. I put it down and I shift it and it and uh, down right. So um probably the best thing is to um lay that on now. There's still residual gilding water there, so I'll put that on. This is also a disadvantage using thin gold leaf, it's more likely to um to to break. And the, the, the edges between the different pieces of gold, is, uh, they won't show after they're uh, Well, the thinner the gold, the more they will show. Um, <laughs> the thinner the gold, the more transparent it's going to be, and the red will have an effect. Um, so when you have two layers of gold, right. you're going to notice the thicker the gold, mm. less, the less the red shows, and therefore the less um, mm. the overlap will show. Between each piece, you're overlapping by one. Two layers. Two layers. Okay. The less the better, but if you try to be too clever, then you probably going to leave a gap then you've got to put a layer over that. Yeah. And it doesn't look as good and you're wasting time, so that's a nice little compromise. So what I suggest you would do is, um, if I were doing this, I would carry on gilding the whole inside and burnish it all together, but probably it's better if you just gild the outside. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. if you how, how it goes really, it's going smoothly then go for the whole thing, but mm -hmm. you could just put that on and wait for probably an hour, you could start burnishing and burnish that, do all that, then return to the inside here. It's up, it's up to you really. Okay. Close. I think just play it by ear. Some of you might find it goes quite smoothly and others you have mental breakdowns. And... <laughs> <laughs> the, the corner, like if you're doing the, the main part of the panel, you've got like a definite corner around Christ's halo and the, around his head. Mm -hmm. Would you still divide that into smaller pieces or would you try and lift a whole um, sheet in one go? Oh, the other thing, you want to keep grease off your knife, so don't put your fingerprints over it, otherwise it'll stick mm. to your knife and that's horrible. Okay. So once in a while, if you like, you can just wipe it on your um, yours cushion and that will take any grease off. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you might think, oh, I'm saving gold by cutting up little bits and pieces, but in fact, because it's all overlapping and you take time, mm. it can be rather inefficient. Mm. So, even sometimes like that, I might cut a corner so it's more like a triangle. But mm -hmm. sometimes you just like that bit, I might decide to just put a whole big bit on and you waste that bit, but in fact it just moves things along. Mm -hmm. so it's, mm -hmm. Or the bottom here would just be one big bit probably, just, just depends really. So, it's, so a, bit, a big tip, the long tip, will take a whole sheet? Well, theoretically, but it's actually very difficult to do well. Um, right. I, I will, I'll, I'll lay a big bit down for you to show how badly I did. <laughs> There are a few tricks to the inside, so I'm going to demonstrate that now as well, once I've tamped down the, the kibot. So here I've got to move this around so the water flows away. So here it's dried on the left, doesn't it? Mm. So this will be so you turn it a bit so the point is touching, mm -hmm. and just go up to just slightly overlap, but not much. Mm -hmm. Over the top of the gun. Yeah, just about a millimetre. Mm -hmm. Sliding it around still. Bring it up. Mm -hmm. 
it's the lifting off of and creates a, um, a split. The shift of when you're lifting, as I did then, is a split. Mm -hmm. So the lift, it's a bit like coming down a mountain, but that's often when people die. It's when you're lifting. <laughs> it's when you're lifting that you can crack things. I've done it and you lift off. And you never know you're getting out This is probably too late now for it to stick, but I'm going to put that on that little, little crack there. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on there anyway. In that case, I'll push it down and it increase, increases the chances of it sticking. Mm -hmm. So now we can, before I do any more, I want to make sure this is tamped down. So um, I'll leave that there to help the water drain. So now we're going to go tamping and then see the moisture is all gone from there. So once I've tamped the rest yeah. down, that's going to be ready to. Um, to give it a good hard brush. So let's tamp this down. So if you, if you had a panel where the shoulders are meeting the, the raised edge and you were gilding the raised edge, you want the gold to go down into the slope? That's right, yeah. Okay. Because, um, so the, the paint never goes up the slope? That's right. Basically you just want to stop water running down on top of gold you've made. So if you Gild the bottom first and then the top, right. then the gilded water is going to stay in the gold. Gold itself doesn't oxidise, but somehow mm -hmm. um, water does affect the, the surface. You want to keep all these bit of water there, so you want to keep this away from the water. So if I do that and there's water on it, it's going to stain it a bit. Keep your eyes open for unexpected little bubbles of water because there might be the 90% is dry, but you've got a little blob there with some water. Okay, so if at this stage um, little cracks are revealed, what we do is we just, um, well, the best thing is to burn it, and then I'll show you how to call it fault. You just, you just fault those little areas. Um, the various techniques of faulting and, and different times to do the faulting, and I've set them more or less what I think works best, at least for me. Mm -hmm. and I'll show you that technique. So now, um, ideally, what a thicker one. That's much better. So remember, brush we laid in this direction, so we want to brush in that direction. So just make double sure there's no moisture. So gently at first, and then you can go backwards and forwards harder and harder. The harder you are, the more it's pushing the base, and that's quite, quite hard, that. It, mm -hmm. Obviously it's soft at the end. So yeah. start soft at an angle, not vertically, mm -hmm. 45 degrees, then gradually increase until you can virtually polish it. And as I said, some people just leave it that degree of polish. Mm -hmm. Perhaps later on, an hour, give it a good rub with cotton wool. Um, you get a nice texture to it. Which direction you, did you see? Initially, uh, in the opposite direction I lay. So the, the gold is laid like that. Yeah. So if I initially brush this way, I might break gold off okay. from the rig out. With, so, with the Venus. So if I laid in that direction, I brush in that direction first. Yeah. And then afterwards, you can go in any direction you pressed everything down and it's solid. So let's press down again to make sure everything's okay and then gently mm -hmm. press that way and then anyway. Keep an eye if there's any moisture because moisture is going to be trapped a bit longer in there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to inadvertently go in there because you're them. Um... So there are very really fine wrinkles and it's these you want to get out now as it could be that when you burnish um, the gold will break off and have little fine lines. And are you always using the more the tip of the brush, or you, no. you are putting in a lot more pressure? Toward the end, you're using um, the, the harder heel. Okay. Like that.
I used to um, do a lot of this with cotton wool, but what's going to happen if you hit a, a wet part of cotton wool? Yeah. It's going to stick and you really pop them soon. So at least with this, if you have a wet part, you might break the gold a bit, but you're not going to have lots of hair sticking on the gold. Right. So the, the reserve the cotton wool to when you're sure it's dry enough after half an hour, an hour, for final polish. You don't even have to use that. If you're going to burnish with the burnisher, you don't really need the cotton wool. This is sufficient preparation for the burnisher. I also had problems. I had a batch of cotton wool where they had it wasn't totally soft, so it had tiny little oh, every yeah. now and again it got a little grain in it. Nice. Mm -hmm. So that's the yeah. So okay. generally avoid cotton wool and use it for the